Good day everybody, welcome back to uh, TF Custom Shaving Brushes Workshop. How are we all doing? You had a good day I hope. You can see I've got something, something nice and red in here, red and clean. Something interesting inside. But we'll reveal it all as time goes on I guess. Most of you know what it is anyway. Um, <clears throat> So yeah, so just let me um, play around with a few things here. Um, music volume should be okay around a bit there, I think. And my voice should be not too bad at that. Just let me get up the chat now and see what's going on. Reza, you're first in again, mate. Good on you. I think you're going to have to be my moderator, I think. <laughs> I'm doing well buddy, I'm doing well, I hope you are too. Any signs of that new brush arriving yet? I'm expecting we should get a few drop in on this uh, stream, through the stream mate, so um, yeah, hopefully it'll be all good. And um, I'm also trying something different tonight too. Um, I'm also um, recording the stream so that I can video edit it and maybe put up a shorter, a shorter version of this on um, YouTube as well. Like the live will still go up, but um, I just want to have a play with um, with recording the the stream live as well, and then video editing that and see how that works. But I um, will ah, we'll see how we go. It's it's a time thing, so whether I've got the time to do it or not is another thing. But. Uh, I've now got it uh, able so that I can record the streams as well. Or, um, if I want to, I can actually record something else whilst I'm doing something in the workshop and not necessarily do it as a live show. Excuse me, I just had my, my dinner, so um, Yeah, so I could record um, other things that I'm doing in the workshop when I'm doing them, and then um, I can put them up as a, as a video. Um, to YouTube as well without actually streaming it live. So yeah, it's it's something uh, something else for me to play around with. Uh, delay with the voice and video. There shouldn't be, mate. Um, it could be a little bit of late latency coming through. Um, normally, uh, normally when I watch them, actually when I when I record the live or when it when it goes up to YouTube, I can actually edit. Like I can go in and I can edit it if I want in actual YouTube. But I have noticed that when I play it in that, that there is a sync issue with the um, the audio to the video. But then it takes a while for YouTube to actually render that and put it up actually live on my page. And I noticed that when it goes live on the page, the audio and the video are all in sync, so I don't know whether it's got something to do with that because I've never really had any, um, I've never really had any issues with the live shows once they've gone up to YouTube. So um, yeah, well I don't know why it's doing that because everything, nothing's changed, and I've got my on-air thing in front of me, and it's shown that the data rate's good, the cache is all good. Um, the recording is something totally separate, so that's um, nothing to do with this at all. It wouldn't, it wouldn't cause any um, issues with syncing. So um, we'll keep going anyway. We'll see how see how we go with it, buddy, and um, hopefully it will sort itself out. <clears throat> oh, there's one of my cameras gone. This happened the other night too. It kept wanting to cut in and out. Um, I've actually moved a couple of, the, well I've moved one of the cameras and I think it's that one that's gone out but um, it done this to me a couple of times last, the other stream and uh, before I got on air and then it came good again, it never never cut out for a while after that so they're temperamental the GoPros, eventually I'd like to change them and um, I'd like to get this front shot, that's been done on a Sony Handycam um, and it gives an excellent picture, much better than what you get out of the GoPros. Um, it's a lot clearer, it's a lot sharper. Um, the GoPros are, are, are good for what they're used for, but they're not really 
ideally to be used for this, but it's all I've got at the moment, so I've just got to make do with what I've got, aye. Eh? Brett, how are you, buddy? Good to see you in the, uh, in the stream. You wouldn't have been uh, lucky enough to get your brushes yet. Yeah, well, like I said, I'm, oh, so it, it's been at your end then. You've been a bit laggy at your end, mate. Yeah, well, I'm on the MBN here too, but we were on um, we were on cable connection. Um, we've had cable for years and years and years, um, and then we changed to MBN, and I was a bit reluctant. Um, I mean, I know I had to anyway, give up the cable and, and go to the MBN, but it actually. Um, we actually pay for the speed pack, so we've got the top speed pack. So I get something like, um, I think it's 100 megabytes a second download, and I get, um, I think it's 40 upload, um, and it's the upload that you need for streaming. So this stream, as I've got it set up with the, the way it's set up at the moment, it streams through with a data rate uh, megabytes, megabytes per second at 9.16. That's what it's sitting on at the moment. That's what it's uploading. But I've got the capability to take that up to 40. Um, so I could actually stream at a much higher definition. Um, but this is fine. I mean, 1080p um, is, is as much as you're going to get on YouTube and that anyway at the moment. I think, well, you, you can go up to 4K now, I guess, in some of them. But um, for streaming for what I'm doing, 1080p is more than enough. And the quality of the picture um, is normally very, very acceptable. It's better than, than a lot of others. So, um, yeah, so. Yeah, so Catman fan Razor is um, Brett. Brett just got a couple of brushes sent off to him, um, I think it was, well oh, I can't remember, was it yesterday or the day before? What day are we at now? We're at um, Thursday now aren't we? That reminds me, I'll be away over the weekend, I'll be leaving tomorrow to go up to Tin Can Bay, flying uh, big model aeroplanes and camping for the weekend with the boys, so um, I'm looking forward to that, it should be, um, should be quite good. It's been a while since I've been away, so I'm going to enjoy it. Yeah, Brett, I would say, well, it, it's Express, so I mean, Express normally gets there within a day or two. Um, I've never really had too much of a drama. If it's not there in two days, it'll definitely be there on the third day. Um, and again, depending on your locality too, how far out of Sydney or how far in Sydney you are, um, it'll just depend on that. But normally the Express is within, you know, a couple of days to three days normally. All right, well, um, I might get started on this. I really don't know what I'm going to do with this one. I'll, I'll, um, I'll just, I'll, I'll come in in another shot for you. Um, so there's, I've moved this camera. So this camera was sitting over, over here previously, and I've now moved it over to here, um, so that you can actually get an end-on shot and see what I'm doing at the end of the blank here. I've still got, so that's the only one I've moved, the head-on shot, which is the Sony Handycam straight in front, um, that's still that's still where it's, where it's always been. Um, and the head cam one um, from top down is still where it's been as well. If anything, it's probably sitting a little bit higher out of the way. Um, and the only reason for that really is, is to um, keep it away from any splatter off the sanding and stuff. But it lets you see the the shape of the brush sort of more or less straight down and then obviously the other one will let you see it from the side like that and if need be I can always move them so um, yeah pretty good and I was playing around earlier with um, um, I was playing around earlier with the software just having a look at the picture and picture um, because you can put a picture-in-picture picture on this as well. Um, 
So there I am there, and if I go to the pallets, and let me just have a look, I'm still, still learning all this stuff guys, so, so size we can, um, we can make it a little bit bigger, and then we can position it wherever we like really. Obviously, once it's put in a position, um, you wouldn't want to move it around too much. But maybe just um, maybe if we just say there, that still lets you see what's going on at the lathe. It still lets you see me and how I'm how I'm using the tools or whatever. And I think it should still stay there when I move to the other camera shot. So just let me try that for now. So it stays there, it stays there, that is the head on shot, but even when I go to the other shots, it still stays there. So that gives you a good all round um, sort of setup there, so I might leave that there for now, um, and I might just make it a tad bigger. Move it just slightly um, there and there, and that shouldn't restrict the uh, the view um, of what we're doing on the cameras. So let's just check that again. So if we go to that view, we get a straight cut there, and then if we go to that view. Get a straight cut there so we've got that covered we can go to two and we get a cut to there and we've still got the picture and picture up so that's good um, the only thing I'm not sure about is whether I can still bring on my graphics but look let's just have a bit of a, a play with that one um, I'm just not sure what that'll do with the picture and picture being up there so um, I'm not sure if it will bring it, ah oh, yeah it still brings it on over the top, so there so there we go, that, that's good, that's good, alright, alrighty, so, let's see where we're at, okay we've got Harrell back in the stream, how are you Harrell, Ryan how are you doing mate? So it's all new to me this stuff, so I'm, I'm sort of feeling my way through it all, you know. Um, yeah, I'm sort of feeling my way through this switching stuff and, and um, you know, having the music there and setting up the mics and all that sort of thing. My next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set myself up with a lavalier mic. I've got a lavalier mic. I've got a Rodi uh, Prolink, I think, uh, lava, lavalier mic. So I'm going to set myself up with that. And I'm going to try and see if I can um, get a better sound out of that, where it it will pick me up more. The music will still come through the um, through the through the live through the mixer, um, and so will the mic. But um, the mic being up closer to my mouth may dull out some of the other sound, and um, you know you'll hear me clearer. But anyway, we'll, we'll, that's that's my next thing to try and play around with. So I've had a bit of playing today. We're now recording the streams as well, so I can video edit them later and shorter versions for putting up on the tube as well. And um, yeah, so we'll see how we go. So look, we've got a few guys in. Um, no worries. All right. Well, look, I might get started. So. I might change to um, I might just change to camera three now, and um, I'll let you have a look at that blank. So you can't really see too much because it's been machined. Um, but this top section was cast separately to this piece, 
Um, this piece was a lot bigger in size, was a lot chunkier in size. And in the middle of that, or close to the middle of that, there's two razor blades um, where they're crisscrossed, they're actually crisscrossed together, um, one through the other one. And, um, and then I've put red acrylic in there, and it was poured in um, one, two, yeah, that piece was poured in two sections, and this piece was poured in a, a single section. Um, and then these two were bonded together, and now I'm going to turn it into a handle, and we'll reveal the, the, the uh, razor blades inside. Obviously, I'll be limited um, as to the shape of the brush because of where the razor blades are inside. Um, but I should still be able to get a little bit of a shape. I'm going to go for my normal style because I quite like that style. So I'm going to go for that style. Um, we may have to take some material off the top here um, just to bring that down a little bit less because that's going to be pretty big and chunky. Probably only want that about 20 odd mil. Um, and then we've got the option of putting in a, a, um, a two band finest, a 26 mil two band finest, or we can put in a 26 mil uh, tuxedo. Now the fellow that's actually interested in buying this one is Matt, and um, I think he's got a preference for the tux. Sorry, he had a preference for the badger. So, um, if Matt comes in the stream, that's where we'll that's where we'll head for. But either or, both of these will be about 28 mil out of the handle. So, you know, I'll probably end up drilling it with a 20 with a 28 mil hole, or I might go smaller to a 25 and then size it up accordingly so that it's just a little bit tighter um, on on either knot. I'd say the badger probably could go to a, a 28, but we'll, again, we'll, we'll, we'll suss it out as we go. I might drill out slowly at 25, and then we'll take it up as we need to, um, and we can try both knots and just see how, the, how they're looking at the time. All right. Um, so that's where we're at. So I think, uh, without further ado, I might get started, otherwise we're gonna be here all night. Um, so I'm just going to bring that in fairly close, I'll check that, I'll drop this right down. Now even although I've bonded these together um, just by hand, but you can see I've managed to get it fairly, fairly uh, centred as well. So there's a little bit in that, that one's pretty much spot on. Um, but this one's a little bit off center, but not too bad. So, <clears throat> so I'm going to go with that. Um, I might just get rid of my, um, might just get rid of my thing over there, and I'll set up for the next one for later in the stream, and then we'll get cracking, eh? Yeah, razor, I mean, the, the tuxedo would look nice in it. Um, I think, you know, like if I, if I sit that there with the black, with the, the red and the clear, with the red in the bottom, um, it looks okay. Um, it's really hard to tell. But his preference is for a badger being fitted in, in it. So if he's the man that possibly might be buying it if it turns out okay and um, I've got to go with what he's actually what he's actually after so we'll probably be sitting the, we'll probably be um, setting the uh, the badger and to, to, to finish it with but anyway let me get cracking I eh? so I'm taking out to about 1500 rpm just going to move it back just a touch. And I'm just going to take that off of there. Um, I will put a couple marks on this.
just to give me an idea. So from there to there, I want that probably about 20. I'm going to try it at there. And then if I go down to there, well, I've actually got to work to the bottom of the blank. So this blank's going to be actually quite long. Um, so I'm wondering if I can maybe leave a bit more on that at the top. Because the handle's going to end up being something like 70 mil, which is a long handle. Now I might I might leave it at that and we'll see how it we'll see how it shapes out. So I'm gonna to have to take quite a bit off there as you can see. changes to that camera too and see how that one looks like. Whoa. Oh well there's our first mishap, this app for uh, the live streams. big deal. Oh. Okay. Hope that hasn't chipped out the bottom there. It's chipped a little bit on the bottom, see? Around there. I'm just hoping it hasn't gone too deep that we're actually into the um, area where the blade is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and see if I can pick up the old jaw marks so that I can get it to centre the guy. Yeah, I was trying to take too much off, that was the problem. Um, I was trying to take too much off in one hit for the way it's set up at the moment without any tailstock support. Um, I should have really been taking a lighter cut, so it was my fault really. So I'll go back to just a lighter cut now. There's always a reason for these things happening, right? I was probably trying to take too much of a cut, well I know I was, and I was probably trying to take it off too quickly. That's the kind of cut I should have been taking off. Just a nice fine, just a nice fine cut. And one last one. And that'll bring me down to the size I want for that top piece. You can see I'm taking it a lot slower and I'm taking a finer cut. I'll just get rid of all that swath. So that's me at my size now, I don't have to take any more off. That's where I want that top piece to be, size wise. 
Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually leave that. Um, I'm going to think this one through a little bit here to get that shape at there. What I might do is I might. I'm just going to try a couple of things here, guys. So just bear with me. I'm just. I'll probably jump around with this one a little bit because. Um, it's a tricky one, it's not straightforward. Well, actual fact, I'll tell you what I'll do first up. I'll drill my, uh, I'll drill my hole so I can get the tail center in as well and give me some support. How's that? Yeah, Harrell, that can happen. Um, I always try and make sure that I'm, I'm very cautious of that. Um, when I expand the when I expand the chuck in the handle, and um, that's why you'll see me. I take my time and I just nip it a little bit, a little bit, and a little bit. And then when I think I've got it just enough, I leave it at that. And typically these these chucks, if you tight over tighten it, they, they can exert a lot of force. But typically, if you just if you go that bit too far, the, the handle will just go bang, and you can normally hear it. Um, again, depending on what type of resin it is, I guess. Um, but you can normally hear it. You'll hear the crack, or you'll hear it go bang, and you know that you know that it's uh, it's cracked. But um, yeah, I've I'm very always very cautious of that. Now I have had a, a couple of handles that that's happened to me on back in my early days. Um, but you know, touch wood, I haven't had any any more. So um, I've obviously got the knack for it now. I think. Right. So. I'm going to drill this, so I'll need to get my uh, Jacob's chuck, and I think I will do what I said, guys. I'll start with a 25 mil. So I'll start with a 25. Um, so 25 is that one. So we'll go with that one first up. Turn the lathe slow. We'll speed it up a little bit. Probably too much. Um, and I'm just going to take a bit out and then reset the uh, reset the bit to zero. <coughs> Flush it with the end of the blank again. bit there and then I'm going to take it in at least 15 and then I'll uh, if I need to come back and drill it more I can drill it more so that's a 25, but these are going to be too big to go in there because these are 26mm knots, so they won't go in. So I will have to size it with my chisel. <clears throat> but at least I'll be able to sneak up on it to make sure I get it right. Okay, so we'll take the tailstock off for a tick. And we'll stick it over there. And we'll set this up. So you'll see what I'm doing here now um, with that camera in that position. You couldn't see the shot where I had the camera previously. Um, so you should be able to see this one. Yep. Now, um, what I also might do is I'll set this to... Um, uh, da -da 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 -da. I'm going to set my 
calipers to about 27. And then I'll transfer that mark onto the end of the blank. So it's really a mill either side of the hole that's already there. And that gives me a mark to then set my tooling. And I just need to bring that back just a touch. So I'll just take a little bit out and then I'll check that with my steel rule. Yep, so that's bang on 27 there, so we want to try and maintain that all the way in now. As you can see, I'm holding the tool relatively level. And I've got, I've got it set about centre to the blank, and that's me just hit the bottom there. Now we may have to take more out <coughs> to get the right depth from the loft that we want, but this will get us started. We'll just take the sharp edge off so we don't cut the outer bristles of the knot. So I'll need to take that label off this one too. Um, and then I'll give this a sand up before we uh, epoxy it into the handle. So who have we got? Rory's in. Rory, how are you buddy? You haven't changed your mind, you still want a badger in this and not a, a tuxedo? going to rough that up now so it gets a good bond in the epoxy once we eventually set it in feels a little bit tight so I think I'll open it up and that's sitting at about 56 yeah closer to 57 that's sitting at loft so I'll probably want to take that down um, I'd reckon about 55 54 for this knot so I probably want to still go in about another two mil with this one um, and it will be much the same for the tucks because the tucks is, see the tucks won't even fit in there yet um, because the, the tucks has got a, a slightly bigger glue bump around the side here it's just slightly bigger than the base of the knot so you need to, that would need to be taken out to about 28, 29 out of the handle whereas this one is fairly, fairly even all the way and that, that, I mean that one's going in fully there, but it just needs to go in another couple of mil. And the tucks I can't even get in until it's bigger. So it'll pr the tucks will probably fit in, just so you can see it with both. The tucks will probably fit in after this next bite. So we've got 27 there at the moment. I'm going to open that up to about 28. So I'll just reset my caliper. So that's 28. And that's my mark there. And the 
it's just a nice slow steady push in with the, uh, the skew just to clean up the side of that hole. That's me hit the bottom. <clears throat> just give that edge a little sand again just so we take the sharp edge off. Now I still need to take the depth down. That's much better on that one. But I still need to go down a couple of mil yet on that one. And I'm just wondering whether the tux will fit in yet. Yeah, tux fits in there as well. So there's the tuxedo in there. And the tuxedo is sitting at now about 55. So you know, I wouldn't take the tuxedo any lower, so you need, it's decision time, decision time, badger or um, it's badger or tuxedo time. You need to make your choice because it now changes depending on what knot we put in. So if we, if you want to go with the tuxedo, I'm going to leave it at that. But if you go with a badger, I'm going to go another two mil deeper. So you're sticking with the badger, mate? And if it's the badger, I'm gonna go in two mil deeper with the um, with the uh, the Fosna bit. And then I'll need to take two mil out with the uh, with the skew. So we're sticking with the badger. Okay, just move that out the way. Bring this up. I'll put the 25 mil bit back in, and we'll go in with another two mil. Set that on zero. There we go. Slow that down. So we should hit about here now. Yep, there we go, that's the 15 mil. second bring the tool rest back in and I've just got to take that little couple of mil off the bottom so that the knot will seat in there properly and that's it gone Feels nice now. It's not choking the knot. And we've got about 54, 54 mil loft there, which should be quite nice, I reckon. And it's not choking the knot. So that's where we'll leave that now. So we can 
start thinking about doing a little bit of shaping now. And we'll bring all the security options back into play. section a little bit first I do I do I do I do so we'll do that first before I get too carried away I do like this new material, this new epoxy resin that I'm using. Um, it cuts beautifully on the lathe. Okay. Time to bring in a little bit of stability and security, I think. Make sure I've got enough room here for the tool rest. It gives me enough there. So I've got a number of factors I've got to be mindful of here. When I was drilling that hole for the knot, I've got to make sure that the point of the, um, let me just show you what I'm talking about. So if I go to camera 3, and I'll turn that off just in case I hit something, but you can see the point on the fastener bit protrudes past the cutting sections of the, um, the fastener bit. So I had to be careful when I was doing that to make sure that that point didn't actually break through this red section here. Okay, because I don't want that showing inside the handle, to be honest. Um, but if I had to go, I would have had to go gone anyway to get the depth for the knot. But I didn't want that, so I've made I made these kind of bigger than what I actually required, so that I've, it, I could have a bit of room to play with, really. Um, so I had to make sure that that didn't pierce through there. Now what I've got to do is I've got to make sure that when I shape the handle, that I don't catch the razor blades, because if I catch the razor blades, the handle is all over. So I'm gonna um, I'm gonna start. I'm just thinking about how I'm gonna shape this because um, I think I might, um, it's a tricky one, it's a tricky one, I maybe should have um, left a bit more meat on this one when I machined it, because um, I'm not going to be able to get much shape in it like I do normally with my, my brushes, um, I think this one's going to have to be a limited shape one, but look, we'll, we'll persevere, we'll see how it turns out, Rory's under no obligation on this, this handle, so, um,
So what I'm going to do, um, like I said, it's going to be a tricky one to shape this, but as I'm, as I'm going, I'm sort of thinking about how I can manipulate the blank to maximise the shape. So to keep the brush looking okay, I think this is going to have to be made a fair bit narrower than the rest of the blank. And then I'm going to have to leave this section here as big as I can leave it and then come in and slightly hollow that out and then bring it back out to the fat, the, the bigger size here in the bottom again. Uh, the bottom's probably going to have to be shaped with this end in the chuck. Um, so I'm going to have to be very mindful of that and only take very, very fine cuts near the end when I'm, sh when I'm shaping the base because that's all that's going to be holding it in the jaws. And as Sorrel mentioned earlier, it can be an issue there. Grey Dog, how you doing buddy? Yeah, so like I said, I'm just playing with this one as I'm going to be honest. Um, and hopefully it'll, um, hopefully it'll pan out and I don't have any blunders, like hit the razor blades. <laughs> What I might do as well is from time to time I might end up sitting the knot in there just to see how it's looking as far as shape. It is going to be a fairly long handle brush um, just because of the razor blades inside dictating the size of the lower part of the handle. But we'll take that as it comes. Get rid of some of this. This here. Okay, I'm going to have a look at that, just to see how it's going. Yeah, so that's still looking fairly big on that knot, um, but I might just slightly start to hollow in here as well so I can get an idea and see how this um, how this is going to pan out. We're going to have to just keep stopping and to make sure that we're not getting too close to the razor blades. Um, because the razor blades are what's going to actually dictate the shape here and how far I can go in. I think there's still a fair bit of material there though, so um, 
think we're still okay at this point. Might just lift that tool rest up a touch more. Yeah, there's not much good news on the TV at the moment, is there? Or on the radio. Really hard to tell how close I am to the blades through the um, through the resin. That's why I'm going to keep stopping and checking on a regular basis and just having another look. And because if I hit one of those blades, it is all over. And I think I'm getting fairly close on one blade there. So. sure that we're going to get the shape that we really wanted on this. Um, but I'm going to go thinner up here anyway for now. Happy with that. Just 
try and clean this up a little bit. a little bit more. I'm really nervous about this one guys. Um, try to make sure that I don't go in too far. I think I've still got room there. It's hard through the resin. You can't, can't see it. You can't get the true indication as to where are the blades sitting in relation to the uh, the edge of the resin? is the one that's getting closer but I think I'm still I think I'm still a bit away from it so I might be able to get a fair bit of shape on it or enough that I might be able to do something with it on the bottom anyway maybe something a little bit different to the norm put a couple of beads or something in the bottom this style but kind of chubby. What do you reckon? You reckon it would look alright in a, this shape but a sort of stockier? Well I'm, actually I've got to go longer anyway because I've got to um, get to the bottom of the blades and then there's blood in the bottom as well and I'm hoping that I can um, I'm hoping that I can still recess a coin in the bottom as well. One of my medallions, my maker's marks. So you can see there's clear and red veins in this one as well, in the top section here. And then this is going to be all clear with the blood at the bottom and the red up the razor edges of the razor blade. So that's it from that view. And then if I go to camera two, you'll see the shaping so far. So there it's there. And I think I could probably still go a little bit more in the hollow here, um, if my eyes are not deceiving me. We're getting close there though. But I think we could still go a little bit more. Famous last words, eh?
as you can see guys I'm going very cautiously here what I might do is I might hit that with a bit of water and just put a little bit of shine on it clear so that I can actually see into the blank better um, just so I can see where the blade is in relation to the edge of the, the resin might just help me to, um, to see it a bit better. So all I want to do here is I just want to, I just want to be able to see where the blades are in relation to the edge of the, uh, the handle at the thinnest point in here. This, this area in here. Samuel, how are you, mate? Welcome to TF Custom Shaving Brushes YouTube channel in my workshop. Okay. Hopefully that'll let me see what we've got, what I'm dealing with. I just want to get a look at this razor blade. That one, I think. Yeah, I can probably still go a bit more yet, I think. I want to get close to the blades there, but not touching. <laughs> Otherwise, we're in strife. Tricky one, lads. I wouldn't want to be doing too many of these. good on the bottom I've just got to make sure that I get it in enough here to get a bit of shape to the handle but like I said I just don't want to hit those blades which is very, very slightly off centre. Um, yeah, see, I reckon I'm getting fairly close to that one there. Although, it's hard to tell, really. I really don't think I want to go any less than that, to be honest. So, 
I think what I'll do is I'll taper this down to the bottom now and then we'll think about what we're going to do on the very bottom. Because I think I'm getting fairly close to the edge of that one there. Um, I'd like to got it closer into the blades, but I don't think I can, guys. Um, this could be a very eventful one, this one. I don't think I've ever been so nervous with a with a brush handle than this one. I mean, I know I've put a lot of work into this one too, so um, I don't want to ruin it. I'm trying to look down and see how much room I've got. I think I've still got a little bit. But we are going to be getting fairly close soon. Pushing the boundaries here. And I think I might um, I think I might leave it there actually. I might um, just lighten up that ring a little bit. And put more of a be on that. That one. I'm liking that. And then I think I'm still going to lighten that top red ring around a little bit, just um, flatten out this round. Sorry about that vibration there. Um, skew a bit of a touch up with a diamond card. 
just to put a nice sharp edge on it again. So there it is. I just set the diamond card on there till I get it flat on the bevel. Give it a couple of strokes. Same on the other side. That would cut paper, that would. Uh, Grey Dog, I can't zoom in on the mic because I don't have zoom set up on the cameras. Um, but you will see it, you will see the blades once I, I start the shaping and start sanding it, mate. Um, once that resin goes clear, you will get a um, you will get a nice a nice view of the blades. Still a little bit of chatter there, but not much I can do about it, unfortunately. Just take a lighter cut. I just want to try and get the final shape. Um, just let me stop the light. I'll give that another wipe with a bit of wet just to clear it up again. So, again, I can just have a final check where we are with that, those blades. A few tool marks in there I need to take out for the carbide as well. Just to smoothen it, but you should almost be able to see the blades now when I stop the camera. It's not really a blood red, um, it's more of just a bright red. Yeah, so there's a couple of tool marks there, but um, if I just move the camera down closer, you can actually see the blades there now. So it's a blade through a blade. Can you see that? Can you all see that okay? It's a bit hard but once we get it finalized you'll be able to see it better. Anyway, I'll move that back up out the way and I'll keep shaping because um, I've got a bit to do to this one. I might have another look and see if I can even go in a little bit more there yet. So that blade looks like it's sitting horizontal and I've got gap there. That's the one I'm close on, that one there. So I don't want to go anymore because that one I reckon we're not far away from hitting that one. So that'll do us I think as far as hollowing in here. Now I've just got to get my shape suited for the uh, for the bottom section here. So it's going to be quite a chunky handle. Not chunky chunky but it'll be chunkier than my normal ones. 
and then um, we'll have to shape the bottom. But I've got to finish as much as I can here now before we put it put it in the in the other chuck. tuning and tweaking that shape now. To try and get it the way I want it to look. I don't want the top of the handle looking too chunky because the base is going to be fairly chunky. top down a bit. So I do have plenty of material around that top section. streamers. And I reckon I'm getting there now with that. Um, fairly happy with that. Maybe just a little bit more here. Let's have another look and see how that's looking, eh? myself there I, I wondered where that come from. I must have caught it on the edge of the tool when I was getting rid of the shavings there so yes yeah, so we're fairly close on that one fairly close on that one and then we get further away from those ones so that's where we're gonna have to leave that um, but with the knot in there she should look quite nice she is going to be a long handle though um, we can work with that, I think. <clears throat> right, so I'm just going to clean up these tool marks in this area here for now. It's better.
the white streamers everywhere. And I am losing a bit of, bit of blood. But I, I think I clipped the edge of the tool when I was taking the streamers off it, off the end, and I just caught the edge of the uh, the sharpened edge on that uh, the skew chisel. Um, sanding up and then we can give it a I'm gonna have to basically finish this now and um, so that when I turn that around I've only got this little bit of shaping here to do and the bottom to shape um, and I should still be able to use the uh, live center on the bottom to hold the uh, the handle against the chuck hopefully down a bit, it's too fast for sanding. I better have a bit of a check on these blades while I'm sanding too because the sanding still removing material.
Yeah, the bits and pieces one is um, we're going to have all the leftover castings um, or leftover resins with different colours and that. I normally put them into a cup or, a, or another mould and then what I do is I uh, very carefully without cutting my fingers off I cut them up into little pieces of the bandsaw and then I cast them in a, a mould um, and I'll pour maybe say black or put a different colour in and then all the different coloured pieces that are in there once you turn the handle they'll all come to the surface and you see different shapes and different colours. I think I've still got one in my display card now actually um, or there might be one on the website um, for sale. I can't remember. I can't remember if I sold it or. But I do have a few other blanks of that um, that I'm still going to turn in the handles yet. This one's been on the cars for a while. I mean, I've done this one in a few different stages to get it to where it is now. Um, that's why I'm being very cautious because um, if I just go that tiny fraction too deep on in that internal curve of that handle there, then I could ruin the whole handle. And there's no, no saving it because once I hit those blades, that's it, it's gone. I'm just going to give this a bit of a rub by hand now. Just to make sure that there's no um, deep marks, tool marks, sanding marks before I start to go to the wet ones because I want to get anything out of it now before I do go to the wets. These clears, um, when you've got clear resin there, they always take a bit longer because you've got to spend more time on them than what you would on a, say, a colour. Well, it depends. Some dark colours need to be have a lot of time spent on them. Um, some colours are worse than others. But clear, you've always got to make sure you get it spot on because um, if you don't, it will stand out pretty strongly. I'm dying to see the top and see how the top turns out. Should be a lot of red spiraling in there, so you know it'll look really veiny type look. I think it'll have.
getting reasonably happy with that now. That should come up nice when the uh, when I hit it with the clay. So I'm just going to spend a bit of time on this section now. Actually, I might use my um, where is that gone? I got a little piece of foam here that I, I used to rub into the um, to rub into the tighter spaces where I can't get in with my fingers. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. It just depends on how tight the shape is. Whether I can hold it to get it. Yep, that's getting it. Okay, I should have got the uh, wet sand now, and uh, that should all clear up nicely now, I think.
and even the clear won't um, look 100% until it's had a buff and a bit of polish put on it and that's when the clear will even come up even more but I can clearly see the um, I can clearly see the blades now So all I'm doing here is just going over it in different directions with the uh, the wet sanding. This is about a thousand grit this one. So I just want to take, you know, get a nice fine sand on it before I go to the micro mesh pads. And then um, hopefully the micro mesh pads and then the buffing will bring up the rest. Still ain't over yet by a long shot. Um, like I said, we'll go to the micro mesh pads now, I think, and then um, I'm just going to do these one at a time. Who have we all got still in the stream? Obviously Razor, right? Who else have we got in here?
there, Harrell's still here. Yeah, every grip now just takes it closer and closer to the uh, finished result. Uh, it's got a couple of Gillettes in there, uh, Grey Dog. I think one's a Ruby. Um, I can't remember what the other one is. Um, one's a Ruby and the other one's a Platinum Plus. Both Gillette. Like I said before, I don't think I'd, um, I don't think I'd do another one. Um, they're, they're just a lot of work. Um, I've enjoyed making it and trying it, but um, I think it will be a while before I do another one. another three parts to go after this one and then I'll give it a bit of a, a dry off and then I'll let you some look um, and I'll check it make sure that I'm happy with it before I turn it around Starting to really come come to its own now. And on these last two parts, I'm just going to stop it and give it a little hand, so you'll probably get to see it better then as well. 
I'm just going to stop it and give it a little bit of a hand sand on these last two grits as well. There you go. You can't see the bottom very clear yet. There's a patch of spilt blood in the bottom as well, but um, you won't see that until I, until I turn it around and clear up the other end as well. <laughs> Don't you blame me if you're in an accident, Brent. Um, what I'll have to do is, I'll, if I do put a medallion in the bottom, I'll have to do it with the pattern tool because um, the fastener bit would go up into the bottoms of the blades. Um, so we'd have, it'll have to be done with, I've probably got room to do it, but it'll have to be done by hand and not by a, a fastener bit because the point will go up and just destroy the blades in the centre of the blank. Um, so yeah, if I can put a coin in there, which I think I might be able to, but I'll I'll have to put it in carefully by hand, mate. So that's that one. are falling to bits. I should complain because they're brand new. The, um, the glue is obviously letting go the um, abrasive surface to the um, foam pad in between. They're about 20 bucks a set and you, you know when you're doing handles like this, because you've got a lot of detailed areas, they wear out fairly quickly. So, give it a hand rub with this one. Right, so we'll just give that a tiny little dry off. I want to put some of my um, sanding abrasive in the knot recess just to clear that up a little bit inside. Put that one away now. So 
and once that water dries up, I mean that'll polish up nicely but um, that lets you sort of see it now. So you can see the blood on the blade, you can see the blades now. So I'm just going to get a little bit of my polish. Fine, and I might use a little bit of this one. And a clean paper towel. As you can see, I go through lots and lots of paper towels too. <laughs> Much to my wife's dislike. just to help sand up in the inside of the socket and um, give me a bit of clarity through here where the knot goes in. So we'll turn that down slow, I'm just going to nice and slowly rub that in. Yeah there's red spirals in there mate, you'll probably see it more once the um, once it's polished up. I mean the resin is tinted red as well, but there's, there's well there's clear patches and there's yeah I can see clear patches and red patches in there. Um, I'm not sure if that'll show it better. You can see the um, smoky spirals there. Sort of looking orange on the camera, but it is actually red. up a little bit and I'll just scrunch a bit up to go in the little V in the bottom from the fossil bit just to get the polish out of there that's that so that's that one and then I'm just going to go with a little bit of this one as well Nice and slow. Well, a grey dog, they, they vary depending on what the customers want, but they're typically anywhere around about the 60, um, around about the 60 mil up to sort of 70 mil normally, um, but normally in that 60, 61, 62, um, just above the 60 mark. But um, I mean, I can make them any any size the customer wants them. So um, there's no set size, but. Most of my typical shapes that I make are normally around about the 60 to, you know, 65, 67, somewhere around about there. I do like a longer handle. Okay, well I think... I think I'm reasonably happy with that. I might even do a little bit of that polish on the outside actually. This, this uh, final one. We 
we've still got a buff yet too, so um, the buffing will bring it up again as well. So I think I might just give this a little bit of a touch up and just see how it comes up with that, this polish on the outside. This is like a super fine one, this one, so... Um, Paper towel. Oh. I nearly had to pick up the roll, didn't I? In inches, oh dear, I'm a metric man, I'm not an inches man. Um, so what's it, six, um, trying to think, 75 mil would be about three inches, so there'd be a bit under three, a, bit un, a little bit under three inches basically, um, anywhere from 60 to 70 mil. So, you know, probably a quarter an inch, half an inch less than than three inches. I've no idea when it comes to inches now because most of my measurements are doing metric. And I'm useless at converting it back. Roughly 25 mil roughly is an inch, roughly. Okay, what do we think of that lads? I think that'll do me. Um, the rest can be done on the buff. But that's not bad at all. And I think you should be able to see the... Uh, you should be able to see the red swirls in that side bit when I put the towel in there. It's, I think the photos will pick it up there once the knot's in as well. So. Um, yeah, anyway, let's move on because we've been on for a while now, so I need to get this um, out of the chuck and it needs to go on the other chuck. Are we right with that? Yeah, we should be right now. So um, take it out of the chuck. Yeah, she's going to be fairly chunky. Chunky, chunky, but a lot chunkier than my normal handle, put it that way. So there it's there it's there now. I'm trying to let you see the spiralling in that top section of the red, but it's a little bit hard with the lights, because I've got studio lights around me. It's a little bit hard, but you can see the blades in there and you can see the red on the blades. And you can see the pool in the bottom. That will come to light more once I start turning the bottom. Um, so that's what we're going to do now. Heirloom one, two, three. It's um, got some Gillette blades in the middle, mate. 
uh, Gillette, Ruby, and uh, um, what was the other one? What did I see? The other one was Lads. So a, a Ruby Platinum Plus, and the other one's just a Wilkinson sword. I don't know what. Later, I can't really read it now with the blood on there, but um, anyway, that, that's what it is. So now we're going to go into this mode here. I'll check that for. Oh, mate, that's as true as a die. Look at that. That's spinning pretty true, considering I've rechucked it. So Harrell, this was the piece you were talking about, um, being careful, like I say, you'll see how much time I take to just make sure that I don't over tighten, but get it as tight as I can because you don't want it coming off at this stage. And I'd reckon I'm pretty much there now. But what I'm also going to do is, until I get the um, until I get the base shaped, I'm just going to bring up the tailstock very, very gently. Um, in fact, I might even put um, I was going to put a piece of foam on there, but um, I don't really have a piece, so I don't want the point working into the blank too too much that's all but I think I should be right if it looks like it's working in too much I'll um, stop the lathe I just want it there to hold it there that's all till I finish this shaping Yeah, definitely mate if you're not um, if you don't know what you're doing or you're unsure or you're a little bit less experienced it wouldn't be hard to um, to go through that and just entirely you know lose it To try and get the shape reduced a little bit, I'm going to put quite a large, because I've still got plenty of material on the, the bottom section of the handle, I'm actually going to put quite a large round on the bottom, and that should help lift the length and the shape of the handle back into a bit more perspective, and keeping it all looking right. Now that tail stock is basically just turning now, um, so it's obviously worn a little bit into the, uh, the bottom of the handle, but that's fine because if I can, I'm going to try and put a coin in the bottom too. If I can. So I'm just going to clear that up now. Look at the, uh, the blood marks on it and see where we're at with them. I want to have a look at the handle just to see where we're at. So I think I can still put a bit more undercut on that there. And right back to there. I 
still want it to be comfortable in the hand. That's not too bad there. Just have another look before I go too far. Actually, yeah, it's not too bad still in the hand. It's got a nice feel. Yeah, grey dog, I mean, it's not, not hard. Um, I mean, you do a bit of turning yourself as well. I mean, you know what it's about. Um, it's not hard to, to split one. Just want to make sure I leave enough there to uh, take the coin in the bottom. So I'm going to stop there and just have another look. I'll tell you what, if I put a coin in the bottom of there, I'm just hoping I don't go into the blood. I might end up having to rub this up now, just so I can see what's going on, eh? What do you reckon? So we'll go through the grits again. Now that I've got the tail stock off, just gently go through those grits again. Until we get where we need to be. touch. Yeah, it's, that's still nice in the hand, eh? I mean, it is, like I said, it's a lot wider than what I would normally do them, um, but it's it's still comfortable in the hand. You can feel its size, but it's still comfortable. Now, what have we got across the bottom? Just a little, little chip there that we need to deal with. Um, that was where it was held in the jaw when it came out the jaws before the, at the start of the string. Um, so you can see just there more red, it's, that's where, it, where the last of the chip is out of the, um, when it came out the chuck early in the stream, which was my stupid fault. Trying to take too big a cut. Too fast. Right, let's get the next grip.
no worries Sorrel, we'll catch you later mate. Yeah, I'll put up the usual photographs at the end mate and um, the little 30 second video on the carousel, if the carousel is still working. It's been playing up on me of late. I'm not going to do too much on the right on the very bottom because um, I'm going to be cutting a lot of that away anyway to put the coin in there if I've got enough there, which I think I have. So I'm just trying to let the sandpaper do the cutting here because I don't want to put too much pressure on the, uh, the handle and the chuck.
<laughs> so Brett is back in the house, eh? And I'm kind of thinking that I'm not going to put a coin in this, so I'm going to clean up the bottom as it is before I go too much further. Because I'm, I don't think I've got enough room to actually do a coin in the bottom. So I'm just going to chance my luck and um, well, challenge. I'm not going to challenge myself any further because I think I've been pushing the limits with what I'm trying to do with this brush. So I'm a little bit reluctant because I think if I try and put a coin in it, I think I'm going to come up into the blades and bust through, through the pool of blood in the bottom. So I'm just going to hollow out the bottom bit hollow at the bottom and I'm going to finish the bottom. So unfortunately, as much as we would like to have had my maker's mark in this, being that it's a, a true one-off, but I don't want to chance it and ruin the handle for a maker's mark. out at the bottom. Nearly, I think. Try my straight edge on it now. It's a little bit more hollowing, but we're nearly there. sanding, then we'll give it a polish and then that'll do it I think. We can set the knot.
Give it a buff. Okay, sanded. <coughs> Famous last ones on every wood timer. Just one last cut and you end up, you normally end up stuffing it. No, not really. The handles are all fairly stable as they are, um, Brett. Um, I mean, they've got a big enough base on them that they can stand up nicely themselves. The coin adds a little bit of weight, but not not that much that it um, that it has any impact on how the handle is going to sit or feel or anything like that. Um, but it was pointed out to me in one of the other live streams that I've done is some guys have reverted to using. Um, little made up brackets for taking the brushes and um, they rely on magnets to hold the bus brushes to the underside of their, uh, their hanger and um, somebody was asking, I think it was Chris Madden actually, um, was asking if my coins were magnetic because obviously some of them are not um, but my ones are magnetic and um, so they will magnet to a stand that's been made for brushes um, and it's fitted with magnets on it. They will, um, they will magnetise to that. So um, that was good to know. I mean, I did, I wasn't sure initially, and I said to him, well, "Look, I'll try it for you." And fortunately, I had a big magnet here, so I was able to try it, and it worked a treat. So we'll just check that with the straight edge again. Yep, that's still nice and hollow.
Yeah, I think the um, there's not a lot of room between the bottom of the blades and the bottom of the handles, so and the blood that's on the bottom. So um, I think I made the right call, um, not putting the coin in. Now that I'm getting a better look at it, I can actually see. I don't think they'd be too hard to make, Brett. Um, just that it's some nice timber. If you picked up a couple of nice pieces of timber, and um, you know, all you would have to do is make up a kind of like a rack or you know, a shelf that mounts to the wall or whatever, and then just recess magnets into the bottom of it, and then um, then you can hang your brushes upside down with them with the magnets to let them dry properly. So um, it's a Pretty good way of doing it. I mean, I have all, I made up a, a laser cut and acrylic stand for mine, which what, takes my razors. I've done it a long, long time ago. Um, takes my my razors about five or six of my razors and about five or six brushes, and um, but I've just got slots in there where I I can sit the handles in um, from the top of the handle, and the knot sits below the below the shelf. Um, and that lets them hang upside down and lets them dry better. So, um, to me, the knots are better being upside down to dry than standing the right way up. But, you know, each to their own, I guess. Okay. Give it just one last bit of sanding with this grit, with the water, 1000 grit. And then I'll go to the pads, then we'll hit it with a bit of polish, then we'll put it on the buffer, and then we'll bring it back for a final polish. Okay. Get rid of that. Get rid of all the water. Yep, that's looking off. 
too bad. Um, so I'll go with I'll go with a touch of this one first. And I'm not going to put too much on. Let's go fairly sparingly. Give this a rub up. Oh. Starting to get there now, lads. Now I'm just going to put a little bit of this one on. Actually, give it a shake first. And once I've done this, I'm going to take it back to the um, to the buffer. I'm going to give it a bit of a light buff, and then I'll bring it back here for a bit of final polish. If that's all right, um, because we're nearly there. Now, I mean the brush is finished, it's really just a case of setting the knot now, after the buff and polish, and we're done with the um, razor through a razor. Again, I'm just going to work this in nice and gently, let it do its stuff. It's looking not too bloody bad, fellas. And the bottom's looking pretty good. Okay, it's um, buff time. No, not really grey dog, I don't have a name. I don't really name any of my brushes, mate. I normally just go by the colour or what they are. I think this one I just sort of say is razor and a razor. Um, shaving brush handle, but um, I know um, some fella in, in the US has um, called them the blood oaths. Um, the blood oath shaving brush, but his are different to how this one's done. 
I think his only has a single blade in it, this has got two blades in it. And I've done something different with the top and the bottom. Um, I think his one just has a lot of red in the bottom and then a lot of red in the top where I've got sort of smoky red veins through the top of mine and, and red transparent. Then I've got the clear bottom handle and then I've got the blood in the bottom. So it's, um, it's a bit different to how he's done his one. Um, probably a lot more work in this one but um, you know, that's the way it is. So there we go. So I'm going to take that over and buff it now because I can still see just very, very fine marks, but nothing that's severe that's going to go the right way now. Yep, that's it. So let me just sit it, sit the knot in there now. Let me go to the other camera, you'll probably see it better on the other camera. And it still sits fairly neat, nice in the hand. It's, it, I mean it is chunkier than a normal handle, um, but it still sits nicely in the hand. It's still all nice and smooth and where the contours are, it, it still lets you um, have a nice hold on it. So um, I'm happy with that. Guys, I'm just going to crank up the music a little bit for you and then I'm going to um, just go and uh, buff this up on the buffer. So it'll take me um, a few minutes but I will be back. So I'll just
that. Give that a hand polish later. Um, so there we have it, lads. That's me about done. What do you reckon? Got a bit of cleaning up to do. So, Jan, you've just dropped in at the finish, mate. Aye? And you just, there's the brush. So, it's got the blood veins up the top in the top section with a knot set in there. And then we've got the um, two Gillette blades, one through the other one, in there. A little bit of blood running down at the bottom of the handle, down the edge of the blade. And a nice crystal clear finish on the blades. Set with a uh, 26mm two band finest. And there we have it, lads. I'm all but done. I'm just going to have a look through the chat now and see what's in the chat. Couldn't put my coin in the bottom, and there's a couple of little marks in the bottom. Um, but I, I don't know. I don't really know what they are. Whether it's resin that's not been hardened or or what it is because I just couldn't get them out but um, the rest of it's pretty much spot on so uh, there we go lads TF custom shaving razor razor brush <laughs> Sure. Um, I'll get rid of this board. I 
back up on my, my glue stick. I'll get rid of the board and I should be able to sit it, sit it on there. Now you can be able to switch to that other camera for you. And there you can see the brush there. So if you haven't already, please subscribe down here somewhere, down here, click the bell button, please subscribe, I appreciate it, um, I'm pretty almost done I think, I think I'm going to um, shut the shed door and thank you all for coming and, and uh, all that stuff, anybody got anything else in the chat? To... Sergeant, did you get the um, PNC handles yet, or are they still on the way? Thanks Reza. Um, yeah, I'm gonna wait for this weekend. Boys weekend away, camping and flying model airplanes, big airplanes. So um, I'm looking forward to kicking back and having a couple of drinks and sitting around the campfire at night time and um, a few yarns, a few stories getting spun. So it should be interesting, it should be good. I'm just gonna kick back on it. Anyway, that's this one done. That's another another brush done. And um, <coughs> there should be a razor and a razor. TF Custom blood brush. <laughs> okay, guys. Thanks again. And uh, I'm going to shut the garage door down now, fellas. And we'll catch you next time. See ya. See ya. I'm disappearing. Thanks, guys. See ya.